everybody. Got a great question from one of the subscribers to this channel. And I'm just going to use the first name because he didn't give me permission to use his full name. So, Jim, this is for you. And that was he wanted to add some text to like the side of a barn, but he wants it to look weathered like it belonged there. And he says, I think I, there's a feature in Photoshop called displacement or displace, but I'm not really sure how to do that. So, Jim, this is for you and everybody else who wants to know how to do a really cool effect that looks like this, this uh, weathered uh, text on a wall like that. Or let's do it like this, and that is on weathered wood and have it make it look realistic. And also, we'll take a look at putting an image rather than just text on a wall and blend that in. Are we ready for this? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to photography and as a photo artist, thinking creatively out of the box. Okay, with that out of the way, I had a great question from uh, one of the subscribers, Jim, and he had asked something about taking text that he wants to put on the side of a barn, which I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's like, um, you know, a wood wall or something like that, or like concrete painted wall that's cracking apart, whatever, or concrete wall, doesn't matter. Um, he was saying that I think there's a technique called displace or displacement in Photoshop. And the answer is yes, there is, but he wasn't sure how to do that. So I'm going to share how to do that, not only with text, but you could do that with an image also to embed that on a wall, uh, side of a barn, that kind of thing. All right, let's jump into the program. Before I do that, I need to thank somebody. And this is um, this video is done about three weeks in advance, so I'd like to thank somebody. And again, he didn't give me permission to use a full name, but it's Gordon W. Gordon, thank you very much. He had donated uh, 10 cups of coffee uh, at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. The link is right here on the screen. It's also in the show notes. Uh, this is not a monthly subscription. It's just whenever you feel you're getting some kind of value out of this uh, channel and you'd like to donate a coffee or two, uh, just go to that uh, website. Again, the link is right here, and it's also in the show notes. So again, Gordon, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's jump into the program here. And to start with, um, I do need a, a wall. And uh, so I this is just, uh, I had to go through some of my stock images, and I found this. And I'm going to use this uh, poster a little bit later to use an image, but Let's just open that up. By the way, this is going to be a little bit on the lengthy side today. And um, because there's a, a lot to explain here. So with the image opened up, I want to add text. And then after I do text, I will do an image because I don't want to have blinders on thinking we can only do this with text. So I'm going to grab the type tool, T for type, or it's right here. And by default, usually your color is black. So I need to change that text to, let's pull this up over here. I don't want it to be pure white because if it's weathered, it should be an off-white a little bit. So I'm going to pull down a little bit on this. Like maybe about right there is the color. So a little bit of off-white. And then just type in whatever you want to type in. Um, I'll just call this text for demo purposes. And then after I accept that, Control-T or Command-T on a Mac to activate the free transform tool. Just going to stretch this out. Make this a little bit bigger. And yeah, let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so with that done, enter in the keyboard. Okay, I'm going to um, do a right mouse click on the text layer, and I'm going to choose to convert this to a smart object. So convert to smart object right here. And I'll explain why a little bit later. And right now, I'm just going to turn off that layer. I'm going to focus on the image. I'm going to go on the side here to right mouse click, and I'm going to choose duplicate layer, but I'm really not going to duplicate it. I'm going to come to the dialog box, go to the drop down menu, and choose new. And it's going to create a new document. I'm just going to call this um, an abbreviation disp for displacement. Click on OK to accept that. And you'll notice here there's the tab. So this is the new document. This is the original document here that has the text layer on top, and this is the new one. Now, what I want to do is convert this quickly to black and white and add some contrast. So I'm just going to do a shortcut keystroke, 
shift control u and that just quickly desaturates that and makes it into a uh, black and white if i remember right because i use a lot of shortcut keystrokes in photoshop should be under image adjustment if you want to do it the longer way there it is desaturate so shift control u shift command u uh, on a mac now what i want to do is add some contrast here so i'm just going to do control l command l on a mac to bring up uh, the levels dialog box and i'm just going to play the sliders to add some strong contrast to this image maybe yeah, something like that so we added a lot more contrast okay i'm going to click on okay to accept that and then this is optional uh, to make this a little bit more smoother i'm going to add a blur to this so i'm just going to go to the filter drop down menu choose blur gaussian blur and let's just add a couple pixels to that just a just a slight soft blur and this will make more sense a little bit later this is experimental uh, on the blur you might not do that i mean try it without it to see what the results will be i'm gonna go over here to close this out so it should ask me do you want to save this now here's really something important when i choose yes to save this the dialog box opens up uh, I'll, I'll save it in my sample image folder you've got to make sure that the extension is a psd you don't make this a jpeg you don't make this a tiff file this feature will not work unless it's a psd file so now i'm just going to choose to save that and i'm done that closes out now we're back to our original image here and let me show you that here's the text so i'm going to turn that off right now and i'm going to make sure i'm on the background layer and i'm going to go to channels and i'm going to analyze the channels that have a good say contrast of say darks and uh, the blacks and the whites i'm going to choose the red this will vary based on your image I'm going to duplicate that by clicking and dragging it down to the plus. I don't want to actually do it on the real red channel. It's a copy of it. That's important. Uh, I'm going to do, again, Control L, Command L on the Mac, and I'm going to make this very contrast. That up there. Let's move this up here. Though what I'm trying to do here is make the dark areas darker, like the blacks deeper black, in the whites whiter a bit and then i'm gonna click on okay to accept that now the reason i'm doing this is once i'm done with that i'm going to hold the control key down command on a mac and i'm going to click right here on that red copy channel when i click down on that again i'm holding the control command on a mac you click you're going to see the marching ants some people call these dancing ants i sometimes call them a pain in the ants but what it's doing is it's selecting the brighter areas of this. And I'm going to go to the very top, the RGB. i got to click on that so I get back to my original uh, color image. Go to Layers over here. And I'm going to activate the very top layer so we can see this. And I'm going to come down here to place a mask. So now we can see we have sort of a weathered look here. But the problem is, let me uh, zoom in on this. The edges are very sharp. By the way, if I turn the mask on and off, I'm just going to hold the shift key down, click, and then shift click again so you can see the difference. So it does have that weathered look, but the lines are too sharp for me, and this is where displacement comes in. I got to click right here on this thumbnail of the image, not the mask the image itself. Then I'm going to go to Filter drop-down menu, and I'm going to come down to Distort and choose Displace. Now, when I do that, a dialog box will open up, and this is where you have to experiment. I'm going to leave all the default settings alone here. The horizontal scale and vertical scale, this is where you have to take a guess at things. I'm going to make this 15 and 15, and the value that you put in there is really based on the resolution of your image and the physical overall size of the image so this is the advantage of maybe okay i converted this layer to a smart object layer so if i it, i don't like it i can go back and make my adjustment real fast so when i click on okay dialog box opens up i select that image remember the image i just saved 
as D-I-S-P dot P-S-D. It's not going to work with TIFF or any other image. Let it render out and look what it did to the edge. Now let's zoom in on this if you can see this. Now here, because it's a smart object layer, I did this non-destructive. And if I turn this off and then turn it back on, you could see that it it just it does a great job, but it, it just gives that look that this is totally distressed on that wall right there. Okay, now we could play with this a little bit if we want. Um, we can do some other things like um, double click in this area right here, the gray area, and we can do a blend if. And again, this is optional. We can come down here and move this to the right, move this one to the left. We can split this by holding the Alt key down option on a Mac, and you could play. Hopefully, you can see what's going on there. Um, let me split that again, make a smoother transition. So that's totally optional. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'll put it back. But again, it's just something if you want to do, something that we can you know, throw a little curveball in there. Okay, so now we did that with text. So there's hopefully this is helpful, Jim, for you. Now, th again, because this is right here um, off a smart object layer, if I double click and go, oh, the edges were too much, I could change that to 10 and 10 over there and then re-render that out if I want. So that's the beauty of making that, again, a smart object. Now, the other thing I'm going to do here is we did this with text. I want to do this with uh, an image. And then I'm going to show you a couple of projects I did um, that is um, off a wooden wall, but also off the side of a barn. And just to save time, I pre-did that in advance. But let's take a look at adding an image here. I'm going to double click to open this up. And I'm going to go to the open dialog box. So control O or command O on a Mac. And I'm going to pull up this poster I made, the future of music. Click on open. Now I'm going to take this, click and drag it to this folder where the text is at, or this layer, I should say. I don't need this. So I'm going to close out of that. I'm going to do control T here. And I'll share a little technique with you. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger like this. And yes, I know it's off the layer there. So I'm going to go to Image drop-down menu, and I'm going to choose Reveal All, and it will expand the canvas. So we can see now the entire layer is showing this image, this poster. I'm going to turn off the text because I don't want that. I just want the image. So I don't want us to think we can only do text. We can actually bring in an image, a logo, poster, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to close out of this. And yes, to save that. And let that render out. And there we go. I want that a little bit bigger because so control T again, um, make sure I'm on the layer. Control T, that will open up the free transform. That'd be command T on a Mac. And I just want to share something with you. If you want to move this around, like if I grab my move tool to move it, I would highly recommend, well, let me do it. I'm, I'm going to move it, but notice when I move it to a different location, I'm moving the mask over here, and I don't want to do that, so I'm going to do Control-Z or Command-Z to undo that. I'm going to disengage the link here. You see a little chain link? I'm going to click on that. So the mask stays in its place. So now when I move the image around, uh, it's just affecting the location but it's of the image, but it's not affecting the location of, of the uh, the mask. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now just, uh, again, a little curveball here. If we take a look at this, look at the edges. Again, if I turn the displacement off versus on. But I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go here on this layer, Control-G, Command-G on a Mac, that puts it in its own group. And what I want to do is add a mask to the group. So it's like I have a mask on top of a mask here. And I'm going to grab my paintbrush, B for brush over here. And this is a, let's see if I can remember where to find this. Sort of shooting from the hip here. Okay, this is your legacy brushes. I think it's brush 59. I got to scroll down. See if I can find this. Yes, it's the splatter brush. I'm just going to pick, you could pick something different, but uh, I'm going to pick that. Um, I'm going to make sure 
I make this a little bit bigger. I make, make my opacity here 50%, so five on my keyboard. And I'm just going to go in the corner there and make sure I'm painting in black on the mask. And I'm just clicking a few times to say, you know, these corners may be, you know, torn or ripped apart. So I'm just going in certain areas just to add some distressed areas. And let's get rid of maybe these corners. Let's make that bigger. So hopefully you get the idea here. And it's all up to you. This is personal preference. It's not you know, right or wrong. You are the artist. You do what you want to do. So there we go. So there's before, after, before, after. So that is using the, the displacement feature in Photoshop to give you a distressed look on a wall like this. And just to show you, again, I'm going to close out of this. I'm not going to save this. And let's see. I've got some examples here finished. Okay, so here is the wall. So a wooden wall distress, same thing. Turn this on and off. You can see this. If I expand this out, we can see distressed. Maybe that doesn't show up. So let me, again, zoom in on this, especially on a T right there. If I turn off the displace feature, you can see how that is sharp and straight. Not natural looking. This has a more natural look to it. So that is using displacement. So you can put that on a wooden wall, and I'm a little bit upset with myself. <laughs> Quick story. This is back when I was, I think, 19 years old. I was driving out in the country here in Michigan, and I found a really cool barn that had the Mona Lisa painted on the side of it, and it was weathered into it. So like two days later, I went back with my camera and took a picture of it in black and white. That's all I shot with years ago. And um, I I know I have it somewhere. I just couldn't find it to show it to you. So I, I took a picture here. Just, just open this up and just show you that. Um, again, I just found a stock image of a red barn here. And uh, I put in, guess who? Like it was painted on the side of the building here. And again, if we zoom in on this. Um, and again, let me uh, get rid of that brush right there for a second. Show you to turn that on and off. Uh, this is distressed a little bit, but there's the displacement. So if I turn the displacement off, you can see how very smooth those lines are. When I turn that feature back on, it just gives it more of a natural look right there. So I think, Jim, that's what you wanted to do on the side of a barn or something. Um, it could be a painting, it could, whatever it is, uh, text. I think you wanted text in that, but again, that's the technique I would use called displacement. That's what you're asking for. By the way, if you're learning anything, if you can do me a favor, and that is please like the video. It helps um, the algorithm uh, on YouTube to push this out to other people who um, are like-minded that want to get involved in, in this channel. So uh, please, again, do me a favor. Like like the video. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. Hit the no notification bell. If that way you'll get notified the next time I upload a video. Okay, so with that out of the way, again, um, Gordon, thank you again for the um, 10 coffees that you donated a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm very appreciative of that and all the other people that have, have been doing the same thing. All right, so with that out of the way, you know my ending most of the time, and that is get that camera out, make mistakes. Why? Because we learn from make mistakes and literally let's think creatively out of the box. Until next time, see ya.